Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's canine educator. Thank you so much for joining me today. You guys, today you're about to meet Zeus, an incredible dog with an incredible, but sad, but hopeful story. So let me tell you a little story about Zeus, guys. Zeus is a German Shepherd that unfortunately was found in the back of a building in Kuwait with his mouth completely duct taped shut, his arm completely blown off somehow and things sticking all in him, rhubarb and all that stuff. Just terrible. I hate even saying it out loud, but people are, are cruel and there's monsters out there. And today we have an opportunity to make a difference in this dog's life. And I couldn't be more grateful. Zeus's owner has saved this dog, flew him over from Kuwait from a great rescue group. And today we're going to make this dog's life change forever. So Zeus has issues with people he doesn't know. Go figure. I wonder why. So severe reactivity, his owner is working on severe reactivity to other dogs. Literally nobody can touch this dog other than two people and some of the immediate family. So she's really struggling. She can't really physically correct the dog because the dog is only has three legs, so he falls over. It's just, it's a sad situation. So it's a very emotional thing for me because I'm just looking at this dog and I know that he's been through some stuff and I can't imagine what he went through. So it's a really emotional case for me as well as everybody else involved. So I, I'm, I'm really excited because we are the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube and we're making differences, we're changing lives and I'm so grateful to be a part of it. I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of something that I created with you guys. So without further ado, let's get in to this video with Zeus. So what's your ultimate goal? Be able to have people around without him losing his mind. When does he normally react to people? What? I mean, sees them, people walk past, they could be 25 feet away. If there's a bicycle, if there's kids, if there's dogs, I okay. mean, anybody. Mm -hmm. If anybody goes by. Okay. And out of control. There's only four people who <laughs> can be around and stuff. That's it. Any of my other family cannot come over. Just sees red and he thinks that person's going to come and he's going to hurt him. Yeah. And that's it. So I'm just going to take the leash. I'm going to work him for a minute and then I'm going to see where he's at. Come on, big guy. Ooh. Just hearing his bark, I didn't need to hear anything more. I was, I, I knew exactly what we needed to do. A lot of it is, is um, you know, your relationship with him. So that's 9.9 .9 times out of 10. It has absolutely nothing to do with the dog. All you, 100%. That's my job. I'm not in the dog business. I'm in the people business. So those are the things we're going to be working on with you guys, is to figure out what you're doing to make him act the way he does sometimes. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you come in and let me in. Now, we do have a prong collar at home, uh -huh. and I have used it before, and he has much better with us. Yeah, yeah. It's just going to be, it's going to be safer for him to use, because he's putting all of that pressure, especially if he's got one leg. Thinks he wants to leave. <laughs> So this is a uh, Herm Springer uh, 3.0. So we have a situation where we have a dog that is obviously reacting and basing his life out of fear. And it's something that you guys are obviously struggling with. He's not in the right state of mind. You can see he's stressed, his eyes are bloodshot. He doesn't like acting like this. He doesn't want to act like this. Typically dogs who are kind of born aggressive or mean, if you will, are just silent. They're just like, I'm just gonna bite you when you get close. He's just like, get away, I can't do, deal with this. And so when I have him on the leash, he's burning my hand with this rope and he's pulling me because he's saying, I gotta get to mom, I gotta get to mom, I gotta get to mom. I then have no leverage to say, hey man, let's just take a step back and let's, let's talk about this for a second and let's work through this process. So if I can't stop him from just dragging me through the leash, then I have no leverage. So I also wanna talk about his mental state of mind and what we're doing. So there's a significant difference between using aversive tools to correct behaviors and the suppressed behaviors. So the suppression would be something along the lines of, he hates me and I'm correcting him every single time that he tries to come after me. And then he just sits there and he's like, okay, I won't bark, but I still wanna rip you apart. That would be like suppression on that of like, we're not fixing the problem, we're not modifying the problem. We're just making it uncomfortable for him to act the way he wants to do. That's, we, we very, 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 very rarely will we ever, ever have to do that with correction tools. The majority of correction collars are used to do exactly what it says, correct the behavior to modify the ultimate outcome. So my goal is for him to go, oh, 
You mean I don't have to do that? And then we're off to the races. How do we build confidence? Well, he's not ripping my hand apart by dragging away from me to hug you and say, I can't go, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. It's the same thing as kindergarten. We have to correct that behavior. With kids, we're like, listen, you have to go. It's like, no, okay, let's, okay, fine, let's just bring him back home. No, 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 no. So, so this collar is gonna be safer for him. And then I'm gonna use my uh, signature No Bad Dog series leash. It, meaning it's it's a four, it's a train, professional training leash. You so said you were deployed? I was deployed, yeah, in the Middle East in Kuwait. And um, there was an area that there were a bunch of abandoned dogs and they kept telling us, you know, you're not here on a humanitarian mission, stop trying to save the dogs. And I kept saving dogs over there. So I went behind this building and somebody had literally chucked him there with his front leg like half blown off, tied his mouth shut and twined and we were just letting him bleed out. Oh, I had a friend message me uh, two days ago. She said, hey, uh, the puppy I'm supposed to be getting, the mom died of cardiac arrest to giving birth. The puppies are fine, but she passed away, unfortunately. Is there anything other, is there any, any advice you can give me other than, you know, loving the, loving the dog a lot when I, and that, those were the words, loving the dog a lot when I get him. And I was like, yeah, leadership. Don't, don't give him all love. That's going to ruin the dog because the dog is searching for, are you my mom? Are you my mom? Are you my mom? And the dog's going to be bottle fed until, so it survives. But the first thing, emotionally, what human beings do is they go, I gotta love you because you've had a tough life. And then they go, well, okay, nobody knows what the hell's going on. And then you get that. <laughs> it's, liter it's literally clockwork. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I am so empathetic in, in, in the process, which because you gotta look at it from the dog's point of view, right? Holy crap, I've been abused, I've been abandoned, I've been neglected, I've been saved, I've gone through surgeries, who the hell are you and who are you? And now I'm here and he's like, you know, he needs that, hey dude, this is what we're doing. Okay, thank God, got it. I always think about the dog's emotional state of mind too when we're working with them. Is like, he's super conflicted because he's like, I love you and I love you and anybody else that the dog's known, but now he's taken up the, he's got, we got a disabled dog We don't want to correct him like with really anything physically because he's that leash pressure correction will take him off balance. All right, so we're just going to go over where my other trainers are. We're going to work on some reactivity. So again, we're going to use the e-collar because we can't physically correct him because he'll fall freaking down. What do you guys think? It's good. You know, what it comes down to is a lot of the work that we did earlier with discouraging the reactivity to allow him overcome his fears of other dogs and other people. So you have three new people, two new dogs, with no reactivity. It's very good. So obviously, by correcting the behavior that we did inside, we've modified his outlook on other dogs and other people, right? So if we suppressed it with the correction, and he just said, I don't like this correction, but I still want to bite me, dog, dog, he would be going now. But he's not because he's learned. And, and again, we're not completely out of the woods. I'm just saying like, what a difference by being able to be out and be social with him without him struggling on his one leg to react to the other dogs. Got it. So see how he's starting to like breathe a little bit heavier? Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is say his name, tell him to leave it. So leave it. So that little build, so Zeus, leave it. You wanna just walk by again, Zach? Zeus, good boy. So then again, if we get into a situation where another dog passes, and so I want to I want to break this down okay. is he historically over time, which is why you drove five hours, <laughs> is reactive to people and dogs. Yes. And so over time, what we've been able to do is discourage, interrupt, correct the behavior we don't like. Right. We figured out a way to say we're going to use the e-collar to give him a correction because we can't physically correct him and he doesn't care about food in these types of situations so we're not going to beat around the bush and we can't use a collar to correct him it doesn't matter if it's a slip martingale prong collar or anything the collar that you're using the herm springer allows you to walk him nicely 
but we're not going to correct him with it because he'll lose his balance. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that when another dog is around and he starts to go, okay, and now I'm getting a little uncomfortable, we're going to say his name. We're going to deliberately tell him very voice inflection, leave it. And then when he does, you also have to remember to um, give him verbal praise and reward him. Mm -hmm. So operant conditioning, we're not going to do that. And we're going to, we're going to, and then we're going to reward when you do good. Okay. I'm just going to work her a little bit. Okay. And I want you have to practice your communication. Okay. You're the one that's got to drive that ship. Because if you leave it up to him, he's going to make decisions based on how he feels. And you have to parent him through that. Okay. So watch for the build there. <laughs> this is where the rubber meets the road here. When this dog comes out, he's like, I got to do this. Right. So he's like, I got to go after this dog. She's moving around and I got to, I got to, I got to get her out of here. I got to scare her away. That's his tactic. As soon as he starts to build, you need to tell him that that's not okay. So he has the opportunity and a fair chance to get acquainted with another dog and be okay with it. Like he was earlier. Good, leave it. Good boy. Lots. Good, leave it, buddy. Come. The reality is, is you want to be able to live the best life with him as stress-free and as anxiety-free as possible to give him the life that he wants. Because up until now, it's you can't bring him anywhere because he's as reactive as he is. Really just about, this is cool. I'm cool with this. I can, I can live a life with this. I, I can go out and be two feet from another dog and be okay. I can get up, I can have other dogs walk around me. Anything more than on top of him, he's gonna have a problem with and so what, so, so would I. Yeah, same. It, same thing with her. Now I'm just gonna, she's just gonna bark. So it might startle him a little bit, but just. <laughs> Good, Zeus. Good job. So that's where you mark. Okay, so you get something that normally we would be probably reactive to. Oh yeah, very reactive to He's like, doesn't bat him. So that's, that's the modification that I'm talking about is you, we didn't, we didn't crank him down. Mm -hmm. We didn't yell at him prior. We just, she barked and he said, hey, I don't care. That's a changed modified behavior. That's different. Am I, am I right? Uh, 100% different. Yeah. So that's the goal. <laughs> watch him, <laughs> watch him, watch him, watch him. <laughs> good. Give him a break and re just release him away. That was good. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Good job. Leave it, leave it. Good. So see that correction? That was good. Did you see that? So he went, that, that was perfect. So I started moving her around and he started going, ooh, oh, mm, that's a little too much. Leave it, correction. Okay, fine. So you diverged him off of that. So that was good. Do you feel like this is a better system? Oh my God, yeah. Okay. Do you He's feel never had his muzzle off and been this close to anybody. I mean, his, his first trainer that handled him was able to get his muzzle off and could pet him the way that you did and would be able to sit because he finally trusted her after so many months of training with her. Okay. But as far as anybody else, no. He can't even be in the room with anybody that doesn't have a muzzle on. Okay. He doesn't have it on. So, like, this is a whole new world. I can't even believe that. He okay. able to do that, which is phenomenal. That's what yeah. I wanted. That's all yeah. I wanted was a way to navigate that for him. Yeah, and so just that to, way he could be in the same room as people and not be scared. Okay, is this person gonna hurt me? What do I do? Have you guys ever looked into like getting that like one of those amputee type things or? I couldn't. I couldn't find somebody who would make prosthetics. For so if I could find somebody, I looked into like three D printing for a while. I think like, you know, as a dog lover myself, I like when people like yourself do the things that you've done. It's like I want to give as much as I can. I've already helped, but I want to try to give back, especially with like my platform. Yeah. And I know everybody that, you know, subscribes and follows also has a love and compassion for dogs. So I know that we can raise enough money to cover the costs. Yeah. We'll cover the costs of whatever it's going to take to, to get him, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Do you feel like the tools that we've used these last couple days, on top of the management and the handling that we've done, are the key to success that you're seeing right now? Oh, 100%. But you have to be invested, though, too. It also comes to the dog owner. If you're not invested, if you don't listen, if you aren't consistent, it's right. not going to help you. So you can give somebody all the tools that you want, which you have for us, because, you know, before it was a little bit of a gray area. Right. And now we have that. And you have to find it. Yes, but it has to be practiced consistently. It's not three days 
for Correct. the rest of life. Right. It's now we go home, we do this day in and day out for a couple hours a day, we break them, so yep. we learn. And then right, you guys, so now it's our time to shine. Let's raise some money. In the link below is a GoFundMe account for Zeus. We're gonna raise money. Anything over, we don't know what it's gonna cost yet, but anything over what we do is gonna go directly to the organization that helped fly Zeus over. It's, it's a Kuwait organization that helps dogs just like Zeus out every single day. So all the money left over is gonna go there and hopefully we can raise enough money to get this dog a new leg so he can go back to his normal life of living. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate Zeus's owners for, I mean, everybody involved. I'm just like, to me, I'm just so little in this whole picture. I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to help and be involved. If you guys haven't yet, like this video, subscribe to my channel. We put videos like this out at, well, not this particular video. This is a little different, but every week, I appreciate you guys. I talk to you next time. Peace.